out in the garage here installing this mx5 things rooftop controller onto this 2021 gt rf uh, this one, roof controller is made for the rf and it adds some additional features uh, one touch operation of the button you don't, button, you don't have to hold it uh, it also allows you to reverse the orientation of the button so uh, if you think up should be closed and down should be open that's what you can set that in there you can also change the speed maximum speed which is uh from the factory i think it's limited to 10 kilometers an hour this you can go up to 30 miles an hour you can set that in the software you can also set uh, an option that doesn't work unless you have an additional controller from mx5 things called the ignition uh, controller but uh, that's on the way and i'm going to install that next so when that happens i'm going to be able to operate the top with the remote control so like three buttons for uh, oh, unlock or open the wake up the car and open the top and the same the opposite would be true for lock so that's what we're doing today and i'm just going to walk you through because i noticed that there really wasn't any walkthroughs on the internet about this so i think the first thing i'm going to do is open the top uh, good one racing exhaust I have to hold this down the whole time. And that's good. All right, now you've got the top off. I think that gives us a little extra room. So we're just going to open the back seat as wide as it goes and move the seat forward as far as it goes. Let's open up this back space here. Uh, you know, I think I'm going to leave the seat belt there for now. We'll see. But this is where sort of the action's gonna happen. I think right back behind that panel, which is right there. Okay, so per the instructions, the next thing I'm gonna do is pop the hood and disconnect the negative battery terminal. So the battery terminal is gonna be right there. Pop, negative battery terminal. That's positive, negative. We're gonna just disconnect that. Looks like this is gonna be a 10 millimeter. And we're just gonna loosen that up a little. So it comes off nice and easy. So I just ended up using a little mat that I had sitting around the shop here. And that's sort of isolated and everything is unplugged. So now back around here, the next thing that we're gonna do is take off this door sill. This door sill comes off pretty easy. Just sort of grab it with both hands. Next step, we need to remove four of these little trim pieces. Uh, this is one here, sort of on the door jam. Two is, or actually one if we're numbering them. Yeah, no, I said it right. One, two, three, this little guy's new. It's not in the instructions. If you look, there is no bottom one there, but that's okay. They just need to update their picture. Maybe I'll send them a new picture. And then the last one's gonna be this one. So instead of four, it's actually gonna be five on a 2021. I imagine this is maybe something that came later. So all of these kind of work the same way. They have a centerpiece that sort of holds. Uh, I'll screw it up. screwdriver or something like that in there so I'll pop it forward and you see how as soon as that popped out it sort of came loose and now this piece is loose too so you can just pop that out with the fork end of your thing once that's it and it just comes right out just like that and you can see you know as the center piece comes down it wedges itself in there locks it into place so it's just a little lock okay so the next step is we're going to be removing this piece here this kind of like pulls this lock in, out of place here. Everything else kind of came out pretty quick. And just pay attention to these little clips here and here because those clips are going to be attached to these little inner tabs whenever you put the car back together. So I think now that this is out, I think this should just pull it right out. Let's take a look at this. Beautiful. For the next order of business is to peel this piece back. Ooh, I'm pretty sure this isn't how Mazda Tech would do it, but that's okay. Um, 
we've got to get up into there a little bit and do some work. So I think this is the best alternative. So what they suggest is using a bungee cord to pull this back. And you see, that's sort of exactly what I'm doing. I'm trying not to put a lot of pressure on it. I did find pushing on the middle helps. But uh, I want you to look at this. Like, I just have a bungee that's wrapped around the steering wheel. This is definitely not what they teach in the Miata school, but whatever. I think I can get back in there. So the next bolt we're taking off, and I'm gonna zoom out so you can kind of see where we're at. The next bolt we're taking off is that guy right there. It's sort of behind this little metal, or holding on this metal piece here. Definitely see the rear having a tool like this. This jaw versus a socket would be pretty tight. I think that's loose enough. I can finish this by hand. Okay. Put it over here. Little trick for taking stuff off that I like to do. Lay them out in the order you took them off, right? That's on the pillar. Those are the three on the side piece. That's the stud looking one up in the middle. That's the piece I just took off. And they're right where they go. Now I'm supposed to. Now that that's off, I'm supposed to lift this off the bolt and slide this out of the way. So flip it down or get it out of the way. And I think all the stuff that I'm going to be doing is right under there. So I'm uh, not sure where that can go. All right, making some good progress here. Get this out of the way, and I think I can just kind of flip this up underneath it. And that's the money shot right there. The two plugs that we're concerned about are right in the back here. Oh, you can't see one. Oh, there it is over here. So it's sort of back there. That's the white one. And then this blue one here, which is right there. And I don't know if you can tell, but they're sort of right next to each other. So I don't know if you see that or not, but that's where you're going to be working. So you're going to take both of those out. And we're going to plug in our replacement piece for that. Okay, quick update. This metal piece right there, I found it much easier to just stuff up there. Like that fits way better than trying to spin it in this space like the instructions say. Don't do that, just stuff it up in there. It takes a half a second. And it adds oops, you get super access to this. You can pull these right out. All right, so this is the actual roof controller here. Uh, you can see it's sort of got a, in, a connector on each end, a male on this side. Oops female on this side. So these connectors that are in here that I just pulled out, those are both male connectors. So they're gonna go into these and then I'm gonna replace them with these. You can't really mix them up. It looks to me like the short one is blue and the long one is white, but there's no way to accidentally plug these in wrong. So, all right, let me, uh, let me do that. And then I'll plug these back into the, the harness up there. And then we just gotta find some way to sort of store this box. Because it has a little uh, sticky thing on there. Okay, so I just make sure to push those in enough so that they latch. They do have like a latching mechanism right there. And so make sure that that's engaged when you put those in there. And then the other end of this is just going to be these guys, which are going to go back into, uh, back into those holes. Okay, so I've basically just kind of routed this cable that that way down into the sort of hole right there because it's, it adds a little link to the cables and there's no really place for them to go but i think once i kind of push it back into that area i think it'll be okay i'll bring this down check out how crafty they are to mount this box take the velcro off and give attention to the carpet that's in here yeah. maybe a little further in that's the beauty of velcro Stick it in there. It's going nowhere. I like this angle too. I like this angle too because uh, you know it keeps it out of the way of the cords, but it also keeps this port uh, facing this way because it's this other cable. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap that underneath some stuff here so this sort of hangs out back here just kind of dangles and then if we ever want to change the function of this module we don't have to tear all this open we can just hook up to the usb port to our laptop and reconfigure it to whatever we want pretty cool all right so i'm gonna plug this in and then I'm gonna plug it in that 
this end. And then I'm gonna start putting things back together. I gotta bring that thing down first and flip that. Bring this down and flip that cover first and then remount the screw. Should be pretty straightforward. All right, now assembly is just the opposite of disassembly. So once we get everything kind of slid back into place, I'm just gonna put that on there. And I don't have a torque wrench on this. I'm just gonna kind of guess about where it was before. And it was pretty snug before, so I'll just use the pressure my hand to put that on there. It doesn't jiggle loose. Be careful when you're putting that in there because I had to sort of rearrange some of the wires to make sure that there was plenty of room for this. I don't even know what this is, but it, obviously some sort of cable routing for something. Um, I don't know what this little thing does so, but it was kind of binding uh, and I really had to sort of you know, shove that up underneath there to get it out of the way. So just be careful you don't interfere with any of the cables or operation little sort of mechanics underneath here. All right, before you zip this up, make sure that's in there pretty good. You can't really come back and put it back in there. I think I might put a zip tie on this, a sort of, or a piece of tape or something. I'll think about that. Just to kind of lock it right there, you know? So let me show you what I did here. It's not super fancy or anything. Um, I just, uh, right there where the cable comes out, if you notice right there, I put a little piece of that sort of nano tape or gorilla tape, mounting tape. Uh, that stuff's rock solid. And that should deaden any of the vibrations and kill any of the sort of accidental pulls or anything like that for a while. Um, it's not as good as but, uh, zip tie up there, but uh, it also won't twist on that little micro USB port at all. I may put a zip tie elsewhere, but I don't think I need to because frankly this just sort of drapes underneath here. There's nothing to really hold it on there. I'm going to put another piece of tape, I think, right there. And then that just dangles out the bottom of that right there. So I think, <clears throat> and then that will just sort of hang out there until such time as I need it. And I can just pull it out. Let's pull it out here. Make my adjustment. Stuff it back underneath there. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to put another one of those little pieces of tape right there. Before we button this all up, we should retest it. So I'm just going to hook this back up. battery back up I mean okay next step is to test it so uh, this should be one half second to close it and look it's doing it it's pretty awesome and I did not reverse this because it didn't bother me as much as some people but you can reverse this another nice thing is you can actually operate this while in reverse so let's test that out put it in reverse um, and then reverse this shouldn't work but let's see if it does it does very nice So replacing this trim piece is interesting. So there's a little, I don't know if you can see that, a little sort of a feeler that's feeling for that groove right there. And you have to also go under this piece of plastic and that piece of plastic. Everything else just kind of snaps into place. There's no other real mysteries to this, but if you don't have that little guy in the groove in there when you start, it sometimes can be a little tricky to find him. Make sure that that back one's in, or else you'll get everything in there just right, and then you won't, it won't be right. So now if it's in there, you will feel a little pop in the middle right there, and that's that stabby one going into that. And then I'm just going to sort of massage these in there, I think. I just need to get a grip on these metal side pieces here. There's one, I just went right in. I just slid right in, thank you. There's the second one. All right, and now the f this all should just sort of look like it's lined up right now. Good. And now, so I'm gonna kind of pop this all together and I put the bottom plate on and everything will kind of look a little nicer. One thing I did discover is you can really hide this cord. You can just sort of stuff it up underneath there. Oh, hidden away. As soon as you want it, you just pull it out. 
Or you could leave a little vet show in if you didn't want to forget about it. Now these little guys should be put in like this. And it just, you just slide them in there and they'll just fall out like that. But the moment that you lock it in there, it's in there. And then the last one on this side, again, just slide that in. Okay, and the last one is gonna be poop right there and we just pop that sucker in. And it is buttoned up. Everything looks like it's lined up. And the last piece is this little trim piece that goes along the bottom. All right, and this little guy's pretty easy. You just gotta remember that you, it right, goes like that. And then literally, it just sort of pushes down like that. And it's awesome. All right, guys, hopefully that helped you guys out. Uh, hit me up in the comments if you got any questions. It's pretty straightforward. Hope this was helpful.